So here I am in one of my favorite, favorite places on the planet, and that's, of course, the San Ynez Valley. That has been my part-time home for the last 28 years when I moved to California in October of 89. Uh, my parents and I and my brother came out to California on a road trip from Minnesota back in June of 89. And I was 20 years old and was dreaming about California. I visited California when I was 16, thanks to my Aunt Diane Breezy. Um, and we had a, a long weekend out here and went to Disneyland and all of that. And that's when my heart never let me forget about California. And so when we were 20 and we came out here on vacation with my parents, I was on a mission to find a place for me to live, even though I didn't know anybody out here. But it was just where my heart was calling me to go. I didn't know why, but I just knew it. And it called me here, just so that you can get, you know, an idea of this beautiful valley. I'm actually at uh, the neighbors right here in their beautiful yard. But down there is the famous pasture. It's Mrs. Pasture across the road down there. Yep. Following one's heart. You know, my move out here in October of 89, not knowing a soul, uh, taught me a lot about following the call of our heart. Um, long story short, after I graduated high school in 1987 and I was going to two years of college at St. Cloud State back in Minnesota, I fell into a deep depression and um, I couldn't understand why. I could because uh, I've always was fairly joyful and buoyant and loved to laugh and had a wonderful family and friends and my horses and grew up on the lake and I mean it just seemed like there was nothing there was nothing that um, nothing wrong but I fell into this depression that oh it wrenched me for two years and I couldn't figure out why I didn't know why um, but my heart was calling me to California and I was fighting that I was fighting that because again I didn't know anybody out here California was the most expensive place to live um, you know how was I to live? How was I to move out here not knowing a soul, not having any money, anything like that? How was that going to happen? You know, it just I just wrote it off as it's not possible. But then thanks to my Aunt Diane, who gave me the book called You Can Have It All by Arnold Patton and another book by my Aunt Joanne. Um, she gave me a book called uh, Miracles by Stuart Wilde. And it was all about leaning into the universe, leaning into the universal energy and divine consciousness that makes up who we are, that we are all a part of, and trusting in that, and knowing, knowing in our heart and soul that this amazing universe that we are a part of, that we are an intimate part of, we're not separate from it, we're a part of it, that this is it's a loving and supportive and abundant universe that wants us to find our joy and find our passion and find our hearts and, and live it. It doesn't want us to struggle. It doesn't want us to be in the dumps and feeling unworthy and feeling like we're not deserving of this or that. No, it, it I mean, look at the beauty 
that this universe, God, whatever you want to call it, divine consciousness created, you know, nature. There's so much beauty. And there's so much synchronicity and um, there's nothing random about it. I know people will say, oh, it's just a world of random chaos. Really? There's the birds. Do, are they flying in random chaos? I don't know if you can see them. They're all flying together. They're tuned in. They fly like waves. You know, the sun rises, the sun sets, the seasons grow shorter, they grow longer. There's, um, we can predict a solar eclipse that's coming. You know, it's, there's, it's, it's, there's an order. There's a divine order. Our bodies, our bodies have a divine order. You know, the heart cells know exactly what to do in the heart muscle. Brain cells know exactly what to do in the brain. You know, our liver knows exactly, those cells know what to do. And they're all working together in this universe that is our body. So, when I was 20 years old and I took the biggest risk and leap of faith in my life, but my, the biggest leap of faith in myself, um, I bet my life on that this universe wants to support me. It doesn't want us to support me, it wants to support all of us in our dreams and our passions. And I know, you know, your head could be thinking, well, Lisa, you know, you just happen to be lucky or you know, no, no, I can't, I, 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 uh, that's not true. If we all came from the same universal divine consciousness, divine intelligence, if we all came from that same place, which we all did, it's available to all of us. The only thing that is getting in our way is the beliefs of what we believe we deserve. And yeah, I, I was scared out of my mind, out of my frickin' mind <laughs> when I decided to make that leap and take out a $2,000 loan and pack up my car. And I might as well be Columbus going out into the Atlantic and believing that the world was round even though everybody else believed that it was flat. I mean, it was that scary for me, you know, like, okay, I'm taking a risk here, a big risk. I mean, I mean, if it didn't work, I could always go back home, but at least I had to try. And I mean, what, what I learned on that journey changed my whole way of living and my whole life. It taught me so much about listening and tuning in to the call of our heart and soul. And whether we believe it or not, we are always guided. We are always guided by this magnificent universe. We are. Not one of us is not. And if we feel that way, then we're just not tuned in. We're not connected. We're disconnected. We, we, believe, we believe that we're disconnected. And so therefore, we don't experience it, this connection. But, you know, it is there for all of us. Tune in to the heart and soul. The heart and soul is always guiding us. It's always nudging us. Our intuition, it's always there tapping us on the shoulder. Go over there, go over there. Or over here, over here. You can't stay here. Or maybe you need to stay here. But it's always whispering in our ear. It's always nudging us in our gut, pulling at our heartstrings. And it's, it's wanting to show us something bigger about ourselves. It wants us to expand who we are. But sometimes that means we have to face our fear and take a risk and take a leap. And that trip out here, it was literally like the clouds of my depression of two years parted and the sunshine came back and filled my heart and spirit and joy and the joy came back and all of a sudden life was an adventure. 
And so I learned that following our heart, and sometimes it takes the ultimate faith, because our head, what we're taught in, is that everything has to be logical, everything has to be in place, everything has to be guaranteed. I need to be secure. I need to make sure that I'm not going to quote unquote fail. There are no guarantees in life and failure is a part of it. Falling down, getting back up. Does a baby walk the first time? He, he or she tries to get up and walk? No. And is, does he get discouraged when he doesn't walk the first time? Maybe the fir you know, first 10 times, maybe the first 100 times. Does he get discouraged? No. He knows where he's going. He wants to walk. Then he wants to run. And we're the same. We're the same. You know, somewhere we learn that <sighs> we learn fear. We learn not to take chances. We learn to play it safe. But playing it safe isn't always healthy. <laughs> we think it's healthy, but it's not. Because when we play it safe sometimes, we risk losing our life force and our passions and our dreams and our joy. And let me tell you, you know, in the field of health and well-being, joy or lack thereof joy, lack of joy, has more to do with our health and well-being than sometimes what we eat and drink and exercise. Is our heart, is our soul, is our spirit filled with life, with our passions, with our dreams, with our joys? Or do we just disregard that and say, no, I've got to live my life this way because this is the safe way to do it and this is what I'm taught and, and you know, money's more important than my dreams or whatever and you know you, we can have it all but we have to let ourselves trust in our heart and um, and take risks doesn't have to be big risks just little risks day to day little risks just enough to step out of that comfort zone and uh, and to grow so anyway following your heart and that's what i started state of the heart fitness in 2001 from that place state of the heart fitness what is the state of your heart not just your physical heart but your emotional and spiritual heart is it filled with joy is it filled with love and passion and excitement and if it's not why not and what can we do to nurture that beautiful amazing physical and emotional spiritual heart you have breathe it in I am worthy of everything that the universe wants to give me and show me. Say it. Just say it. Open your mind, open your heart, and allow it to come in. That's my message for today. On the eve of the solar eclipse, August 20th, 2017. Have a lovely evening and a lovely week. Bye from the San Inez Valley. This is Lisa Breezy.